uh, Mr. Canigliero, welcome to uh, the broadcast. It's great to be here, guys. You're looking very relaxed there at the end of the table. Feeling good? He's looking like the executive <laughs> producer. Is of it? a movie, yes. Yeah, he's looking good. Um, so uh, we were all together in Klamath Falls, Oregon uh, this uh, week, and uh, th you actually made it, Tom. The, the, the screening started at 7. It was snowing for two days, just, just for our <laughs> arrival. And your plane somehow landed, and you somehow made it to yeah. the actual screening. Yeah, but it was a little touch and go. They had... <laughs> Uh, no, no pun intended. <laughs> they had announced prior to takeoff that they might need to direct us or redirect us to Redding, California to refuel in case we couldn't land so that we could try again. <laughs> and that didn't make me feel too comfortable. Yeah, well, anyway. And, 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 I, and I, of course, was right on time. You were. Uh, Tom, For go, you. Go, Tom, go ahead and tell the story of, of what you saw before your plane took off. What, what, what airport were we in? Was that L.A. or San Francisco? So, so we're in the... We're in the uh, L.A. Airport. Right. The director and myself, you know, we got there early, right on time, waiting for the plane to take off. And I'm on my BlackBerry answering a thousand emails and was not really paying attention. And I hear Peter Anger, the director, say, Stephen! <laughs> and at that moment, I, I kind of looked up and I saw Mr. Baldwin. I did not know that you guys were in the L.A. O.J. Simpson Hurst oh, commercial yeah, through the airport. Jake, I, literally, I was huffing it to my huffing gay, it. dude. No, I've I seen mean, so much hustle. I travel with this guy a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty common. So, you know, he was carrying Could a couple of bags and I think a sandwich and maybe a Coke or something. And he yeah. was fumbling a few oh, things. Oh, a light, a light but, load. But yeah. showing... <laughs> but showing a tremendous amount of hustle. Yeah. And I, at that moment, I said, I'm so glad we hired Extreme Media to do this promotional tour. <laughs> well, because the best you, don't, was... you don't get that kind of hustle from, uh, from a lot of But you were actually truly glad because you knew while Stephen was going to nick, nick of his uh, chin, make it, yeah. that, that Kevin was already in place in Klamath. Yeah. yeah. Situation under and control. And I knew that, too. <laughs> So but, you know, you know, dumb me. I get on the plane and I'm like, boy, did I just look good in front of the executive producer and the director? <laughs> Run into my flight. Yeah, Peter and I talked about it for half the flight, saying, "Wow, did you?" That's this, hilarious. That's a great demonstration. You guys hustle. saved that story. I did not know that. Yeah. The whole time we were in Klamath. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, uh, Tom, we've been, we've been, we've talked a little bit about uh, the Loving the Bad Man film when you've been with us in, in days past, but the TV audience is new tonight. They've not heard about it. Sure. So for people, in a nutshell. Uh, the purpose of what we've been doing with these screenings is what? What are, what are we out there uh, showing this film to these select audiences for? Well, the primary reason is, is was originally to get feedback from what we consider to be our core audience. And, um, you know, we've been around the country in Florida and Chicago and now out in Oregon, and the response has just been fantastic. Mm. And we've taken a lot of that feedback. We've actually made some adjustments to the film. And uh, a lot of that feedback uh, we also are going to use in a way as leverage and, and kind of proof of concept for the film so that anybody that we partner with from a distribution perspective now has a vast array of, of, of documentation and evidence that the film is touching people, it's changing lives, Yeah. and it's been just an amazing journey. Tom, talk to me about the response from this screening specifically. Um, of all the screenings we've done, we've heard good things from, Yeah. but it seemed like uh, for those that don't think that God is active and involved in people's lives, this may sound weird, but <clears throat> just indulge me for a second. Sure. It seemed like God was really doing something in the lives of the people that came out, explain how we have seen that since the since the film. Yeah, there's been so many examples of that, but in Klamath Falls specifically, since we were just there, I want to also thank Terry Starbuck who arranged this for us. She just did an amazing job, and we had four or five hundred people at, at the screening. Which on a blizzard night, yeah, <laughs> people sliding all over the roads. Yeah, that was, was actually a great was, turnout. And it's, I think, there's maybe four or five hundred people in the whole town in Klamath Falls. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than that, but no, uh, it's a small town, and and I love uh, screening in in arenas like that. We did a, a rural uh, screening in Chicago as well, and so uh, one of the things that came, that happened after the film, a young lady came up to me and said, uh, "This this film confirmed something for me." I'm like, "Really? What was that?" Well, um, my, I think I got this right. My stepfather murdered my mother 20 years ago, mm. and over the years, I feel like I have forgiven him. But I never really took the step to reach out to him or track him down and tell him that I forgave him. And I'm going to do that now as a result of this film. Wow. That's um, awesome. That's... You know, that's just one example. And there was probably six or seven rape victims in the audience 
who came up to us afterwards. That, that we're aware of. Yeah, that, that we're aware of, that, that we're willing to at least more, share, share yeah. a little bit of their story. And, um, you know, it's really, and, and not, not just people who are victims of rape, but, you know, other, you know people that were, in, were there that were victims of, of incest or, or other things that have happened in their lives. They're all seeing in this film such an extreme example, and we've talked about this, of forgiveness right, yeah. and redemption under the most extreme circumstances we all can imagine. And they're saying to themselves, wow, if the character in this film can do that under those circumstances, maybe I can forgive this person or that person right. or others in my life that, uh, you know, clearly could use forgiveness and, and I need to forgive. Yeah. Right. That's been clearly the, the, the dominating breakthrough aspect of the impact that the film's been having. And, and you know, Klamath Falls was, was, again, just another clear example of that. But, but even throughout the Loving the Bad Man tour promotionally that we've been doing, I mean, uh, I've, you know, lost it. On occasion, when I some of the testimonies, some of the things that people have said have, have just been yeah. absolutely incredible and, and miraculous, in my opinion. The healing that is coming out of this film, the lives it's touching, and the power of the forgiveness that people are getting from it is just miraculous. That's uh, 